Welcome, today we're gonna to talk about the Mojo 68 key keyboard that I got uh, from Kickstarter originally, but now you can, you're getting close to being able to get it on the Mel Geek site. Before we do that, a few ways you can support the channel. Become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. Buckle up, let's look at the, my new favorite iPad keyboard. So I haven't actually moved to building my own keyboards currently, but as you can see, I got a few up there behind me. I've got a few others scattered around the house that people are using now. So I am really enjoying mechanical keyboards and I'm probably going to get to building it. But my latest entry is the Mojo 68 from Melgeek. What comes in this to start? When you open the box, you are greeted with a basic and fairly stiff USB-C cable. Never going to use it. Um, you also get a keycap puller. Uh, some extra keys and a 2.5 gigahertz dongle for the keyboard because yes, this is a tri-band, tri-connection keyboard, wired, Bluetooth, or 2.5 gigahertz dongles. Then of course, you get the keyboard itself with some manuals and some instructions about how to use the keyboard. Basic specs, the Mojo 68 is a gastic get mounted 68 key keyboard. It's not as small as my Ann Pro 2, which is missing the entire right hand row, like page up, page down, but I honestly never use them, so I don't miss it at all. Uh, and there's no side lights, there's no underglow, but there is a good amount of lighting coming from underneath the keys anyways. And since the cases are transparent, you do get to see a lot. It doesn't show it as well in some of the video here, but you do really get to see the lights quite well while you're actually using it. On the connection front, like I've already said, this is a tri-mode connection. You can wire it in with USB-C, you can use the 2.4 gigahertz dongle, plug it into USB-A port, and your keyboard will connect. And then you can also use Bluetooth, which is what I've been using. There are four different Bluetooth channels you can use. And when you look in your Bluetooth preferences, it says it is like Melgeek-C1 or B1 um, to show you which connection you actually are on. You're on channel one. Battery life. I have not charged the keyboard since I got it uh, two months ago. Uh, it's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, so it says it should last, you know, long, about average with the other keyboards I have. But in practice, it seems to be going significantly longer than some of the other keyboards I have. Now, this is going to be due in two, part to two things, I think. One, I'm using my iPad a little less, but I've still spent, spend most Mondays entirely typing on my iPad. So I'll spend an entire day using it most of the day, and still we have lots of battery life. And the second thing is it goes to sleep really quickly which is good in the battery life department, not always so good in the, I'm trying to use this department because you got to come back and I find it wakes up a little slower than some of my other keyboards. Specifically, my Ann Pro 2 came back real quick. Whereas, and also my RK86 also came back real, real quick, but this keyboard seems to be just a little slower on the wake up front. And for you iPad OS users, which is where I use it mostly, yes, it does register the battery level with e iPad OS, so you can see it in any battery widgets you have on your screen. Keys and typing feel. So this is my first keyboard with lubed switches, and oh my goodness, they're so nice. I actually have a set of Kale uh, Silver switches or Kale White switches for my Moonlander, and I keep meaning to swap them in. It's probably been a year, I haven't done it yet, but I'm not going to swap them in until I lube it, which means I need to buy the supplies to do that. Loop switches feel so much nicer. So I would say if you're gonna get a keyboard, then probably look at something with loop switches if you can find it. This is a double shot keycap. Mojo never really says what type of plastic it is, but at this point, a couple months in, I'm not seeing really any real shine on the keys. So I'm quite happy with it. I'm not gonna take this keyboard apart. It is not meant to take apart. People way better than me at this, like, hey, keyboards have taken it apart and said, this is not meant to be taken apart. So I've actually linked to his video in the description where you can see at 1259, he starts taking it apart and says, this is not meant to come apart. Now onto the secondary functions of this. Media keys are accessed with holding the function key, pressing enter uh, to play pause, pressing the up and down arrows for volume and pressing left, right to skip uh, forward or back in tracks. At first, I thought this would be a hard thing to remember, but in practice, uh, it's been fine. I just use them. They work just fine. Uh, I like them. Uh, again, the only issue is that I usually play, uh, you can see my iPad behind me right now, I usually play my music uh, on there into my Sonos system and I have to turn around to do it and it takes a little second or two for it to wake up. It sometimes seems faster to actually touch the screen, wake up the iPad and then do control it that way instead of actually using the media keys that are on the keyboard because it again, it does take a little bit and it does fall asleep. Now for iPad or Mac users, there is no Mac OS mode out of the box. You can't like flip a switch like you can with some other keyboards like the Keychrons and have Mac OS mode or even on my Echo 3068, you could hit a key and then get Mac mode. That doesn't happen. So you gotta jump into the software right away. This is actually the first thing that really tripped me up. I plugged into my Mac, 
went to use the software, downloaded it, downloaded fine, everything like that. But then it's in some, I'm going to say Asian language, I don't read. And so I made a change and I thought, great, how do I save it? How do I load this onto the keyboard? You don't actually need to do that. So don't worry about it. Um, I flip my control and my command keys or my option in my command keys and it works just fine now. But you just make the change and it saves it to the keyboard automatically. You don't need to do anything past making the change. Light functions are controlled via holding function and ZXC. So Z turns the light functions off and on. X changes the mode and C changes the color. I have used a nice purple with this because it just seems to match the keyboard well. And I generally like uh, the modes where as you type, it pulses the keyboard. That's what I leave it as. That way they're off when I'm not using it, not wasting battery. And when I'm typing, I, if I'm, you know, actually looking at the keyboard to get to enjoy it. Purple seems to go with it well. And honestly, my youngest daughter loves purple. So we'll just stick with that. Now, the only key in the typing department that I really miss is the back to key. I use this fairly regularly um, when I'm writing. Uh, when I'm writing even these, if you look at the written version, you'll see anything that's in the code style or slightly different font is back tick. And you'll lose that unless you hold function and escape. Truth is, I hit it once and miss it every time. And then I go, oh, yeah, I have to hold function. So I hold function, hit escape. It's not a huge deal, but it's something that I notice. If you don't use the back tick key, you're just never going to notice that. So don't worry about it. Final verdict on the keyboard. I just love it. It's a great keyboard. I love the loop switches. It feels really nice to use. I really, really like it. I don't use it as my main all day typing keyboard. I use my Moonlander for that, for the ergonomics. But as you know, one day a week or when I'm using the iPad on the station behind me, perfect. I will go loop switches in the future. Before we wind out, here is a typing sound test of this keyboard. That's it. If you like the video, thumbs up below. If you love to subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened. And as I always say, turn off your notifications because you really don't want them. Uh, other than that, become a member at curtismichael.ca slash membership or take a course curtismichael.ca slash education. I have none to recommend because if you're only coming for keyboard videos, you're probably just enjoying keyboard videos. And I don't really do any courses about that. So you don't know, just have a great day. Go hang out with your kids. Ciao.